she needs to do everything she can to get what? to yeah. We love you. We love you. Bye. 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 Thank you. I will miss you. Bye. Bye. I don't miss them. I'm glad they're <laughs> Backstage panicking. Rachel just just calm as a cool as a cucumber and then seeing these awesome dudes just like hustle their buns over there and it's just like, oh, what about Stan? Let's go get him. Let's go get him. Uh, team. 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 Teamwork. What's gonna work? Teamwork. Large metropolis. Calgary. Mm. 
I turned I seven. I you one of these. Well, co compared to the hundred people in my town. What was your town? Fisk. Fisk? F-I-S-K-E. Fisk. Uh, I grew up in, um, Eyebrow. Yes. That's why I'm so good at that. Uh, it was not far from Elbow. Sure. You can step up. No. And I was born in Moose Jaw. You know, funny story. This was originally called Nostril, but they didn't like it. <laughs> Smart person, Joe. Is this the thing that nostrils are? <laughs> oh. Oh, <okay. laughs> it's like the weenus. It was originally called the weenus. <laughs> the weenus. The weenus. The weenus. I would love somebody to name their child weenus. <laughs> Just so people could go, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and the girl could be called the road weenus. Weenus. <laughs> Sorry, did you have a question? Yes, I, I just wanted to ask you if there's anything you guys wanted to tell us about the podcast and maybe when Ruth is going to be a guest on the podcast. Listen, I've been trying to get Ruth in my closet for longer than I've had a podcast. I'm not going to lie. We actually, I have a little suggestion for you for something you could have in your closet this week, didn't we, when we spoke? Something much more impressive than me. I pitched, I pitched it yesterday. Did? Yeah, I, I haven't heard from him on Twitter yet, though. I'm sure David Tennant will totally be willing to get in my closet. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine me like, no, I actually meant my closet. <laughs> that was not a metaphor, sir. But now that you're here. <laughs> I, have a I suddenly have a strange desire to like bring guests into your closet and dress them up in your clothes. <laughs> like you dress them up and then I'll just describe what they're wearing and also I'll describe how they're feeling. <laughs> so, uh, well, he's looking distraught right now. I'm gonna call him. particularly thrilled with his boy. That's true, that's true. I mean, it is Kim's closet. Who wouldn't be thrilled to wear her clothes? I would be. I would be. If you ever need a test subject. There you go. Maddie, you right. got it when you were in there. Dressing people in my closet. Um, um, yeah, we're kind of, I don't know if this is going to be a shock to you, but we still kind of don't know what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> so, in the most awesome way, can we all agree? It's in this entire organization is Scout. And she doesn't, she doesn't get to do her job until we've done ours. So I don't know who's in our closet. The closet is always open for our lovely and wise friends. And um, hopefully we're just gonna keep going with it. So tweet us suggestions, let us know your ideas, and you cannot shut us up. Well, we, we wouldn't want it any other way. Thank you, and thanks for your support. Honestly, it means a lot. We would. We would not be doing it on microphones <laughs> if it were not for you. We'd probably still be doing it. And I don't mean it. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question just now because I wasn't here yesterday? Who here is from Nashville? <laughs> That's awesome. I watched Dumplin' on the way here. Yeah. Do you know what Dumplin' you know Dumplin' is? Yeah. 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 And I love that thing where she said, Dolly Parton says, it's hard being a diamond in a rhinestone world. <laughs> and so I'm now obsessed with Dolly Parton and I get into my room and on, in my room there's a framed picture that says, what would Dolly do? <laughs> so I think I'm going to steal it. <laughs> I'm going to leave the toiletries this time. I'm going to take... <laughs> Here's my friend. Anyway, so nice to be in Nashville. Hello. Goodbye. Ask a question. Hello. Come on. Hey. Uh, first of all, I just want to say I adore all of you so much. You're so gorgeous. You're such an inspiration to me. Um, my question is, what is your all-time favorite book, and what are you currently reading? I know. I did. I did. I'm like, I access you. You ask me about books, and I'm like, oh, too much overload. I'm reading Blood and Bone. And my favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I am reading 
three things right now because I'm not, I don't love reading, so I'm reading them very slowly. I'm rereading The Artist's Way because I started writing this year. Uh, I'm reading a book called Rest, which Lisa Berry recommended to me because she recognized I need some. Um, and then I'm reading a play that Emily Swallow was in um, that, that just won a big award that I got to be there and it was very exciting when she won. Um, my favorite book of all time is uh, Archie Comic Double Digest. <laughs> I'm currently reading, I think, I read, I don't know, I'm on my Kindle, so I don't know what I'm reading. I think it's called Super Villains Academy, because that's how I roll. Uh, super, super genre, slightly silly, sometimes smart. My favorite book of all times is Good Omens. Which comes as a surprise to absolutely one of them. Um, I'm reading a couple things right now. Uh, does anyone know, there's, and I might actually get the title slightly off, but Asimov on Shakespeare. So like, uh, I think Asimov did a, a book on Shakespeare that I had for a long time, but I've, I've kind of bits and pieces gone through different parts. Um, that, that just got really boring for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, actually, I went and got a lot of Robbie Thompson's comic books, like all of his, his Silk comics, because I really want to catch up on those. I love his writing so much, and I just want to see what his brilliant brain came up with, and I like that character. Um, and then, uh, favorite, oh, and I'm reading the Player's Handbook, always. Uh, d d Player's Handbook, because... <laughs> always needs to be with you, so that's what I'm traveling with right now. Uh, and then, um, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> um, favorite book of all time is impossible for me to say, and I will, like, beat myself up for whatever I say, but one of my favorite books was Les Miserables uh, by Victor Hugo. I loved, it was, I think, I read it as a teenager, and it was one of the first times I saw one of those epic tales that took place over that amount of time with that number of people, and I love getting to see the way things shift and change, and you can be so convinced that what's going on right now is everything and will change 100%. Um, and that our story is not just us as an individual, but it's a group story. Um, and so I really like that perspective. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My question's for Kim. I was wondering, what was it like, is, how is it similar from when we worked out with Zach and Cody and like to Jared and Jensen, like how is it similar? <laughs> Jensen and Jared are much taller. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, you said for a mystery yet. <laughs> yeah. So proud. So proud of you when you do like, this. This question is for me, and my answer is so short. Hang on, I gotta milk something. <laughs> We for you. Um, if all of your characters spend a day together, what would they do? Oh. <laughs> What's that about? What's that shit about? I'm like, they, they get shit done is what they do. The episode would last two minutes. They'd be like, oh, it's done. I, I suspect there would be a slight hang up as Rowena explained to Jody what clothes were for. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to keep wearing your dead husband's shirts, dear. I, I think, I think he'd go into the eyeshadow. And I think would know be like a toddler with the eyeshadow. I think Don would be like, does that go here? Contour? Yeah, I personally think he'd be the hardest one to handle. You know? Uh, you know, yeah. 
But I also, I could be very chill, you never know, depending. Okay. But, yeah. lost my shadow I, I think, I think I would be completely bewildered by all three of you. Uh, but I, yeah, genuinely, I think there is a world where uh, Luina works with the two sheriffs. Yeah, it, it could totally happen, and also, you know, they could join in. Ah, oh, and uh, no, we, we have a mutual thing that we have to. Yeah, recognize. and I, there is a world where Meg can come back as you. That, that is still a world. I, I think that would be amazing. And I'm not just saying that. I think with everyone coming back the way they've come back, why the not? <laughs> I love these ladies, and and honestly, they're the people that just FYI they give me confidence to start. Like I've started acting again, and it's because of them. So, um, just, I just wanted to put that out there because we have such power to help each other and. Uh, especially our friends, and to empower each other through those barriers. So, feel very. Yeah. I was about to go rant about Women's Day. Why? You may. You may. Yeah. yeah. I got really annoyed yesterday. It's not normally. That's not normally my reaction to things, is it? But I was like, all these posts, and I was like, what are we asking each other? The question, what are we doing? to empower ourselves. Our men asking us, what can we do to empower you? How can we get paid more? Uh, and so anyway, I, yeah, I got that. That's really fair, that's good. And so maybe, that was, maybe that's a good thing, you know? Like, otherwise it's just posting. And then, yeah, so I, I yeah, I, 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 yeah, let's, what can we do? Well, and it's a really, it's a really valid thing because we have short attention spans, just as humans. Um, it's one of the problems actually like working in the charitable world. People will get like really passionate about the Sudan or something and then they're like, okay, I'm done being passionate about that and you try to bring it up a year later and you're like, there are still people starving there and no one cares because it's not the trending thing. So we do have to watch that I think in ourselves. It's wonderful to generate like excitement and we do need motivation and hope and all that, but, but I think it is a valid thing to say also, what are we doing? Are we getting this done? What I, do you think, Kim? I think what I hear you saying is that there's, there's an action. And I know that I very fully expect to take an action because it is the right action and to have all the doors open and the choir sing and the road of gold paved, laid out in front of me. And that's not what happens when things are hard. I take an action, I get kicked in the fucking face. But I've taken a step. And so what I need to remember is that all of the steps aren't mine to take. I take a step and then I stand and I hold the hand and then she takes a step and then she takes a step and we move forward together. So... here? That's too far, that's too hard, and I only have 30 teeth. You can't keep kicking them out. And so reminding each other that we are moving forward. So I have the same thing. I didn't post about International Women's Day yesterday because I was like, I don't need applause for being a woman. I need fucking help. And I need to be a help. But at the same time, by the end of the day, I went, one of the ways I help is when I can't take the step, I'd be the voice. And we all get to move forward together so that as a surge, it's not a line, it's a wave. And we get there inevitably. It won't be when we want, but it will be when we should land. So just keep moving forward, man. So every step of taking all of those steps is raising your voice. So those of you that did post about International Women's Day, especially in... Um, Solidarity for those who don't have an opportunity to post, who don't get to have a voice. Keep using your voice, because the louder we are, as us, uh, as us all, not just women, uh, the more, the easier it will be to take those steps. A thousand percent. And then also, to go along with, um, and slightly counter, the thing is, you, you have to do whatever keeps you taking those steps and whatever keeps each other taking those steps. So the only thing I will say is, sometimes if you say, yeah, well, it's happened, 
uh, you can then get apathetic and feel dejected and feel like we haven't really accomplished everything we want and you have to like so I do think it's yeah. important to generate that uh, passion to keep moving forward. Yeah, my response was passion actually in a good way. I just was noticing it was a different uh, response to oh yeah. Like I was like, this makes me want to do something so it works. Nice. It totally nice. works. Yeah. So somebody has a question somewhere. <laughs> Wait, did you ask your question, or did we just... You yeah, asked okay. about what the women would... Thank you. We answered right. it. We answered We're going to have an awesome time together. Okay, there we go. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, first of all, y'all are all so wonderful. Just love all you guys. Uh, my question's actually for Rachel. And uh, here this year, I started watching ER for the very first time. So much supernatural people in there. Um, and it made me actually rewatch Sex in the City. It's my favorite thing she's in! What am I, some kind of Lewinsky? No, no. I, can't, I can't believe you know I, like, When I first met her, I fangirled about her. I uh, watched every episode of Sex in the City a gazillion times. Anyway, go burning your question. Um, That's okay. so unlike me. Um, but she's so good at me. She is. I don't Rachel Hine. Yes, that's all needs to be said right there. Um, so, my question, Rachel, is how does it feel to have been a part of two majorly influential shows on pop culture? Oh, it's just super fun. Um, I will say, okay, so there's an interesting difference with Supernatural and Sex of the City, though, which is that um, with Supernatural, I feel like I fell in love with that world more and more the more we worked on it. Um, and like, I love it more today than I did when I started even. It's just that like, every one of these characters, the people inform it, and I love the characters more because I know the people. Um, and it's kind of, uh, that's, that's unusual and amazing. The thing I experienced on Second of the City, as nice as everyone was, was I kind of idolized this, and then I realized how much work goes into like looking good and being fashionable. And like there are so many, like you have no idea, there are teens deciding the the like makeup for that day, and like just the eyeshadow alone, like that was like a consult of ten people. I don't know, like it was it was very intense. And so uh, that actually kind of ruined the illusion for me. Like I was like, no, I, I don't like that world is not such a dream world now. When I realized like I saw behind the curtain, does that? Um, it's, and again, it's not it's not to knock the people involved. They were all amazing. It was just a, a difference that I had with the two shows. I once sat on a plane beside one of the hot dudes from Sex and the City. You know him. When we were in the queue for Comic Con, we saw Smith, yeah. and he smiled at us. I think he watches Supernatural. Remember? I'm Smith? gonna. I think I'm gonna tell myself that he does. <laughs> <laughs> and by, by the way, like like Brianna, Rachel is the one person I've seen Jared fanboy over because he saw you in a play on Broadway. He was like, he was like a teenager, I think, as class one on a trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was. That was You're so cool. I just, I can't, I can't even accept all, because I finger all over. Rachel by far is the one that I go home and talk to my husband about the most. And then Rachel said this, and then she did this, and then she did this. Also, when Rachel was doing the podcast in the closet, I burst into tears. Because I... Oh yeah, we had a tear. It, Rachel's so far, so, so we had two episodes of the podcast with Rachel, and then we just kept talking, and I just turned it on, and so our Save It For A Rainy Day episode is just Rachel saying shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even a topic. It's not an episode. It's no idea. It's that's just the name of your show. This, and then she said this. That's her really, That's the, yeah, Rachel, Rachel saying, saying shit. shit. And this is, it'll be, the, the icon girl will be. <laughs> no, but I was like, Sit down. You're going to make me turn into a tomato. I will just like, literally pop. Oh, own it, girl. Um, own it. But, um, no, I, I love these women so much and I fan girls much over them. It, it's amazing. So yeah, so us in the class was also a lot of me going, I think you're amazing. Um and then and then I, it's 
funny that rainy day or whatever, just me saying shit, I know some of the shit I said was not, like, it's probably a little inappropriate, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, so that's, <laughs> we like that the most. I don't know if you know where the bar is set. That sounds like a challenge to me. literally talks about me and Rachel taking poops. <laughs> Isn't it? And then I do think that eventually, and not that far from that sentence, we start talking about blowjobs. <laughs> so you have to look forward to it. Out of nowhere for no reason was like, I really like giving blowjobs. <laughs> and you can say that out of the blue. And yet you don't like pooping. Not a big fan of pooping. Well, you know what? Luckily that hole is an exit only. To some, to some. I don't judge. I have extreme hemorrhoids from giving birth for too long. So now that is an exit only. Am I gonna get letters about this? Am I in the right room right now? I see this is a little youngster there. You need to get out earmuffs before our panels. I'm sorry, she doesn't understand. It's fine. Um, who's next? Hello. Hello. Um, first of all, 